עץ חיים היא למחזית עם בה, ותומכיה מאושר תרחיה, דחי נועם וכל נציבותיה Our Torah portion for this week is Mishpatim, and it opens with the 21st chapter of the book of Exodus. Now, the word Mishpatim itself simply means rules. Uh, the Torah portion opens with, uh, with the Hebrew, Ve'eli ha-Mishpatim asher tasim lifnehem, and these are the rules that you will place before them. This is where God uh, commands Moses to give the following rules for setting up a just and equitable society to our ancestors, uh, the Israelites. Now, you might say to yourself, in last week's Torah portion, Yitro, we received the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, those great and awesome statements. Certainly, they are enough uh, certainly they are the last word on how we should behave and how we should organize our society. But if you look at the Ten Commandments, if you look at the Decalogue, you will see that, they're, that they provide us with some very general understanding of, of, of how to uh, uh, behave toward each other, but they don't get into specifics. And the, as they say, um, um, God is in the details, right? This week's Torah portion gives us some very specific, what you might call, case studies. Let me give you an example. Uh, in, the, in the Ten Commandments, we read the words, Lo tirzach, you shall not murder. Some people incorrectly translate it as, thou shalt not kill. But there's a special word, there's a specific word for murder, and that's the word that appears in uh, the Ten Commandments. But the Ten Commandments doesn't tell us exactly what constitutes murder, uh, what constitutes uh, the wrongful taking of a life. What if, um, what if a society finds that, a, 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 uh, that an individual has committed uh, a heinous crime and decides to impose the death penalty? Is the, the society that imposes the death penalty uh, also guilty of murder? What about a person on the battlefield defending his or her country and in that, in that process takes a human life? Is that person uh, guilty of murder? What if uh, an individual attacks another, another individual and the person being attacked defends him or herself and in the process uh, takes a life? Is that murder? Ten Commandments doesn't, doesn't shed any light on that. This week's Torah portion uh, gives, us, uh, uh, gives us a case study and, and uh, that, that gives us uh, a few more parameters, a few more criteria on what justifies the, uh, what justifies a, the taking of a life. The case is this. A thief is burrowing under the ground uh, uh, with the intent of coming up into another person's house to steal that person's property. And uh, the homeowner sees this intruder and kills him. Is the homeowner uh, guilty of murder? Or is this a justifiable taking of a human life? The Torah provides us with a criterion. It asks the question, did the sun rise on the intruder? What does that mean, did the sun rise on the, uh, the intruder? It simply means this, uh, could the could the homeowner tell that this was simply uh, a thief, someone who meant not to take life, but just to steal property? If the homeowner takes the life of the thief, then he has committed murder. But what if the son had not risen on um, 
the, uh, on the intruder. And the homeowner had no idea if the intruder was a thief, a simple thief, or someone with a darker, more sinister agenda. And in the process, uh, the homeowner takes the life of the intruder. The Torah tells us that is a justifiable taking of that life. And so we have, we have, um, we have some thoughtful, interesting uh, parameters to make up our minds uh, into, uh, ab about a, a, a case of this nature. Nishpa team has a number of cases like that that are so interesting that deal with theft and and uh, 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 the misbehavior of one's an animal that causes a damage to one's neighbor. All sorts of interesting, interesting cases. Uh, this week's Torah portion begins with the word va'eli and these. Commentators have uh, have often pointed to the conjunction and and these rules, uh, telling us that this is a continuation. This week's Torah portion is a continuation of the revelation that began with the Ten Commandments, that these very practical, down-to-earth laws came not from Moses, they came not from a teacher, some later king in Israel, but from God, directly from God, which tells us that God is concerned intimately concerned with the way we organize our society and the way that we treat each other. I hope you read uh, uh, Parshat Mishpatim yourself. I'm sure you will find it very rewarding. Shabbat Shalom.